You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Enter Connected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Enter Connected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Rainer Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. Also, when you enter this space, you will realize and see how we are more similar than we are different, so we should use that to lift each other up as opposed to using our perceived differences to tear each other down. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that's 866-451-1451. For all of my first-time listeners, my name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board-certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I'm from Florida, and I'm currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. This evening, we're going to be focusing on AIDS awareness, since it is AIDS Awareness Month. And I have the pleasure of having back my kindred spirit, my friend, my rap, rapping doctor partner, just just <laughs> my actual sister. I just, I have... My girl, Dr. Wendy McDonald. So if you all did not have the pleasure of hearing the show I did with her before where she was talking about women's issues, you must listen to it. It is live, all the way live. It won't be live because you'll be listening to an archive, but it is live, not like live. Okay. Anyway, so... (laughs) Dr. Wendy, good old McDonald, is the founder an author and editor-in-chief of Gynecologic. She is a board-certified obstetrician, gynecologist, or OBGYN, in the city of Chicago. And you know what? Let me just go on and tell you a little bit about herself. She was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. She claims that's supposed to make her a White Sox fan by default, but she says go Cubs. It's kind of like bandwagon because they won the World Series and who knows when the White Sox will. She went to Robert A. Black Elementary for preschool and University of Chicago Lab Schools for the, from kindergarten through 12th grade. Attended and graduated magna cum laude as opposed to thank you laude from Xavier University of Louisiana with a Bachelor's of Science degree. XU, XU. Um... She does mention how she would have been summa cum laude if it had not been for that one biology test senior year that she slacked on. I think I took that same test, and that's what made me not get it as well. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. She said that her greatest educational achievement comes from attending Northwestern University, Feinberg School of Medicine. And she means most expensive when she says greatest. Um, the loans, you know, really never go away. So she wanted to achieve something greater while not quitting her day job, not J job, but day job. And so she also met her 
husband, Dr. Ed McDonald, who also has a blog, by the way. I'm going to plug that. It's called The Doc's Kitchen. And she has three beautiful children. So she says she's always loved the ability to share health knowledge and life counseling with patients in her medical office. And she's excited to share with a broader audience. Now, if any of you know me, and if you don't, you should. You should check out my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Raina Gilmore, R-E-Y-N-A. G-I-L-M-O-R-E. I have some awesome videos, but I also have her videos on there because she's awesome. She does a lot more than I do. So we're just trying to promote health and wellness in an unconventional way to reach as many people as we can. So stay tuned for more, but there's so much to look at already. So Without further ado, I welcome Dr. Wendy Goodall McDonald. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I have been cracking up with this intro. I forget all the stuff I said, which is hilarious. And you and your colorful uh, additions to the, you know, but I have little little Miss Sister Mama sitting next to me, my three-year-old. And so she's like, so who are you talking to? I'm like, sis, this is not your conversation. I also want to say, yeah. Always, yes. Briefly, though, you just started something that will not end probably ever. You were like, not J job, you know, day job. And I'm like, I won't quit my J job. It's, 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 okay. it has begun. There, it was and born I knew it. Tonight. Mm-hmm. I felt it in my spirit. It was mm-hmm. born. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't quit your don't quit job. Your job. And women, Stop this. don't quit your J job. Okay? That, don't, don't quit. If that's it. not a hashtag, I don't know what it yeah. is. I mean, it's a t shirt. <laughs> When the t-shirts come out, t-shirt. nobody steal it. We're going to copyright it. We're copywriting it. It's going to be a movement. It's a movement. Okay. And it just started. It was born. Oh, baby, say Take hi. Take care hi. of your job. What up, girl? What up, Katie? All right. So, yes, yes. Please don't quit your J job because oh my when God. you quit your J job, when you quit it, this is when things like STDs, including HIV AIDS, come into play because you're not taking care of yourself. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Oh my That's God, exactly. Saying. That's why I'm connected and interconnected. This is what we do. This there is, is what there it is. we do. Connected so a boom, bam, there to a tagline. <laughs> yes. To a hashtag, to a t-shirt, to a movement. To a, to Thank a, you. To a movement. Don't quit your Vajay job. <laughs> Hashtag Do not more. NYAD. Hashtag. Right, there you go. NYAD. <laughs> Hashtag. Oh, don't get me started. Woo, woo. Exactly. Already. Amen. Amen. And I just had to say a prayer. I had to say a prayer because, yes. Yes. you know. Yes. Amen. So many people don't want to talk about it. So many mm-hmm. people don't want to talk about it because like oh it's taboo you know and I don't know how you grew up but the way well yes I do but everybody else <laughs> knows but the way I grew up is that you know you don't talk about such things like those right. that's you you know that's your private like anyway it's they call private. it a private part why it's got to be private we need to make it public I mean you got to talk about so it. public I mean it's unsafe that we just show it it's to discuss it right to be clear and right, right, not be right. making up stuff, because if it's too private, then you just right. literally have the blind leading the blind in the dark. The blind leading the blind. Because mm-hmm. there's no eyes. You know, your, exactly. your private parts don't have eyes. They don't. They don't. So all you can do is, you know, feel around, I guess. <laughs> this is already taking a turn. It's going left. Um, but, but, well, but it needs to go left, okay? Because, you know, feel around, yes, yes, pun intended. Because you got to feel to know right. something's not right. You must feel pun, to know pun if something is exactly. not right. Pun intended, yes. <laughs> yes. And, I, you know, OB, as this an OBGYN, you know, why yeah. I, became, I came to this space is just to, to educate and to, you know, obviously how women kind of care for themselves, but... You can teach a, you know, what is the, what's the, the adage? You teach a fish man how to fish, a fisherman or something, or a woman. But you, if you 
if you give them fish, then, yeah. okay. This is also not working in my in my favor, but but go with about me, fish and bread and something. Yeah. How to yeah, fish, catfish, which is probably also yeah. not the best analogy to use when talking about one's vagina. If I teach you how to fish, I'm you will saying. be able to live. You know, go with it anyway because we're already there. Um, as opposed well, to just, you sense. know, caring for women, you know, here and there, they come in, they want, you know, answers and I can help that. But if I can give you some backstory, help to not get in the predicament, that can always, that can help us. That can't do anything but, you know, save us from some heartache and trouble later. Amen, sister. Well, it's time for us yeah. to take a break before we go all the way left, because we can. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to get back on track and talk about mental health and HIV AIDS. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, 866-451-1451. This evening, we're supposed to be talking about AIDS awareness. We Got a little off kilter um, in the last segment, but that's okay because that was the intro and that's what we do. And it might go left again, but stay with us. Ride with us. Ride or die. This evening, I have the pleasure of having my very good friend, Dr. Wendy Goodall McDonald, who is an OBGYN, among other many wonderful things. And <laughs> practices in Chicago, Chi Town, okay? So, since we're talking about AIDS awareness, I guess we should talk about HIV AIDS and what that is. Um, so, can you just kind of talk a little bit about what exactly, you know, the difference, first of all, between HIV and AIDS, and just give a little information about, you know, some statistics, prevalence, all that kind of stuff, whatever you want to say about it. Throw it out there. Educate, girl. I'm happy to. So, you know, HIV is human immunodeficiency virus, which basically means it's a virus that causes one's immune system to not function well. Um, That is, our immune system is what keeps us, you know, from getting colds and and hopefully the flu and, you know, all kinds of, you know, pneumonia and that kind of thing. And, you know, certain types of people are more susceptible to infections, like young people, you know, babies, newborn babies or elderly. But people who have human immunodeficiency virus, they are also extremely susceptible to, to infection. Now, AIDS is actually when that virus gets so bad where you are so unable to control your um, immune system, that you can actually get like really severe infection. And that, di- that, that change from the diagnosis of HIV to AIDS comes from how much virus is in one system, what your viral load is. And so people who have very, very low viral loads, even who have HIV, can't necessarily transmit the virus as easily. They can't necessarily um, uh, get those same infections that people who have higher viral loads can get. So not all HIV is made equally, and AIDS is basically like, in some ways, really severe HIV. Um, It's like the levels, gradation. You know, when we talk about stats, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, 
but I'll tell you that, um, you know, men who have sex with men are highest prevalence. Um, and that's in uh, Caucasian and African-American and, and Latino communities. African-American women who are, uh, are heterosexual women are also a very high population who contract HIV and, uh, and AIDS, as well as, and, they, and we often say black and brown women, also women who are of Latina, um, Latina women um, can also contract the virus, even in, again, you know, heterosexual or same-sex relationships. Um, some of it has to do with the taboo of discussing it. Some of it has to do with some, um, you know, needle sharing is, is still a way that people can, can contract the virus. You cannot contract the virus from kissing somebody or hugging somebody um, unless they're like open sores present and like blood, you know, transmission. But you can definitely tra transmit the virus by sexual contact, um, exchange of bodily fluids, and specifically in people who have higher viral counts. I can always okay. go on more, but uh, do you, if you have any yeah. questions about that, you want me to like expound any more mm. on that? Mm. I think that's okay. that's generally what I want. Okay. To, and okay. um, and I think it's important that um we know that it's not just a sexually transmitted disease. You know, it, can, it also can be um contracted through the use of needles. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I don't want people to think, oh, it's just you know, it's just a sex and it's just it's not just men having sex with men where you contract it so you nope. know it's not a quote unquote gay disease so that needs exactly. to be just thrown out okay um, and and to ahead. your point I, I'm in the process of uh, participating in a campaign that's actually focused toward um, what they call cisgender women which is women who were born women um, who identify as women who are not um, in same sex relationships who are mm -hmm. also, again, at, at this higher, you know, risk than, than are often noted, that, that people don't often know they are at a higher risk also of contracting the virus, to know that there is a medication called PrEP, which is a prevent, prevention medication that can stop people who say, say you're somebody who, you know, doesn't consistently use condoms and is kind of living a more, quote, unquote, freer lifestyle, but wants mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not contracting HIV. Now, you could still contract, like, you know, chlamydia and other viruses, you know, from sex, but you could take a medication daily that will decrease a person's transmission, even with somebody, even if they had sex with somebody who has, who has HIV, by over 99%. So it is something to know if you could, anybody is potentially at risk or susceptible, especially if you're not using safe sexual, safer sexual practices. But like you said, it can definitely be with, you know, needle sharing, with drug, you know, drug use. And mm -hmm. again, if there are open sores, it technically could be transmitted outside of just like straight full on sex, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Straight full on sex. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes. And as you know, well, as you should know, just with any other physical or medical illness, it's important to take care of not only your physical health, but also your mental health. So people um, who, with the HIV virus, HIV or AIDS uh, virus, may experience depression, anxiety, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, which has to do with them just getting the diagnosis and find that out is a traumatic situation. So going through dealing with that and processing that, um, suicidal thoughts, you know, you may feel like, well, it, you know, it's not a death sentence, but sometimes because there is not a particular cure for it, people may look at it as a death sentence, but there's so many people who are out there living with the virus who living for many years. Um, and there's a lot, and there's always, you know, research being done and advancements. And so um, insomnia is another thing that, that can be, you know, quite common as well. So I think it's very important that, you know, you realize that you're not only needed to take care of your physical health because you also need to take care of your mental health because it's what interconnected. Thank you. Time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and soon in radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about AIDS awareness. We will be right back. 
Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. This evening, we're talking about AIDS awareness, and I have the pleasure of having special guest, Dr. Wendy Goodall McDonald, who is an OBGYN that is practicing in Chicago. So in the last segment, we were talking about how HIV AIDS uh, can affect you both mentally and physically, Um, and I talked about specifically the traumatic effect that getting that diagnosis can have on someone and how some people think that it is a death sentence when that's not necessarily the case just because there is no cure at the moment that doesn't mean that it cannot be managed so um dr goodall mcdonald if you can talk some yes. about so that Just to expand on that, though, definitely uh, the treatments are super effective, so much so that a person can um, not essentially, you know, pass on the virus if their viral loads are undetectable, which just means if a person were to seek and and continue treatment, they can be, they can essentially live a pretty normal life. That doesn't mean a person shouldn't be safe with their sexual practices and that kind of thing, but you can pretty much secure a normal existence without, you know, worrying about passing on the virus or even having some of those, like, those illnesses I was telling you about, about, you know, your immune system kind of working against you if your viral counts are undetectable. So that just means the person can seek treatment. And similarly, people talk about, well, what if, can I get married? Can I have children? If a person is getting treatment, the transmission from mother to baby is almost zero percent if they're under undergoing treatment like it's as close to zero percent as one can get like 99.999 if they're seeking treatment so my take-home message for that for that person who is newly diagnosed or who's you know knows somebody who's newly diagnosed is that as long as you're pursuing and, and doing what you're supposed to do from a medication standpoint you can you can be you can live you can live essentially you can live right most definitely and i'm glad that you you know iterated and reiterated and hopefully you'll reiterate it again before the show is over that because it's a, it's scary you know it's scary to get that diagnosis it's scary to get any kind of diagnosis where there's so many unknowns you know and 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 there's 
a history of scary things that have happened to people before when it was, you know, when HIV AIDS first came in, onto the scene. But it's been many years since it's been here and there's always, like I said, advancements um, in finding ways to manage it. And, and you know, I'm I'm hopeful and, and, and have faith that there will be a cure at some point. So um, what are some ways that, what are some things that you talk to your patients about um, like signs and symptoms that they may have um, that may make them want to, you know, get tested or just some prevention or safety things that you would like to tell them about? Okay. Well, a few things. Um, first is sex is sex is sex. So what I mean by that is, you know, you have some who think, well, as long as I don't have vaginal sex, I should be okay. Anal sex is fine. Well, fluid is still a risk. It still mm -hmm. puts you in a population that is susceptible to getting the virus. Um, the other thing is, if a person were to contract um, any STD, if I have a person who has chlamydia, I'm going to make sure that they have also been HIV screened because a person who has contracted any STD is now at risk, is more at risk for having another type of STD or STI. STI is meaning the ones that don't have symptoms, STDs are the ones who have, that do have symptoms. And to okay. that point, most people who have HIV do not have symptoms. So people will often ask me when I ask them, do you want just routine HIV testing? Most of, the, most of the time I'm offering people a comprehensive screen, chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomonas, HIV, hepatitis, um, if they're at risk for that, because hepatitis isn't for every population, and syphilis. Syphilis and HIV screens are blood tests that can be done every year or with any new partner. You know, it's not mm -hmm. enough to say, oh, well, they got tested and I got tested before we, you know, we're intimate. Once you're intimate, Get tested again because you've had mm -hmm. you have a new partner. Just make sure that nothing new has arisen. Um, but but we'll, we'll not know if I had HIV. No, ma'am. You know, most of the time you will not know. Probably for years. And I had a patient once right. who who found out in her pregnancy during her pregnancy that her husband had HIV. He mm. had no clue. They were doing a routine life insurance screening. The last time he had been tested was like 10 years prior. Now, thank God she did not actually have it, nor did their children. But you find, you know, you can find out and have literally no symptoms. So just be screened. Right. And if you weren't screened because you're afraid of getting your blood drawn or whatever the case, but then you find out you have something else, definitely go back and get screened. Absolutely. Just make sure. Mm-hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're right. Sex is sex is sex. Okay. There, there's, don't, you know, I, I often talk to people who, who do have that same view that you, that you said that, you know, oh, you know, if you say, are you sexually active? No, like you have to ask. I know I have to ask, you know, head, shoulders, knees and toes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just talking about you know, intercourse, I, you know, I'm not talking about the missionary position, if you will. I'm talking about any kind right. of sex, there's, you know, there's more than and, that out there. Right. right. You know, and you know, people may look at me a little sideways when I say head, shoulders, knees and toes, but I'm like, no head, shoulders, knees and toes. Like, do you, what, anal, you know, oral, all of that, like that is being sexually active and all of those pose a risk. And it's important, you know, there's people out there who don't know. And so it's not like people are trying to trick you or trying to be de deceitful. It's very important that you routinely, just like you get your annual labs, you know, if anything has changed in your life, you, you got to make sure that it's right. So you need to get that test along with any of the other tests. Don't think that it's something, a special test that you need to get, you know. Um, and I think we do need to talk about it more. You know, I think that unfortunately many people find out in those ways that you talked about, which is unfortunate. And I'm glad that, the, you know, that particular patient didn't contract it. But still, you know, you just never know. You just never know. So it's important to have these conversations. And, and to take the taboo out of screening, it's almost exactly. like sometimes you offer somebody screening and they're like, well, why do you think I have that? Like, dude, I don't. Right, I'm I didn't say I think you have. Yeah. Right. Like, it's I'm the same not, with mental it's health. not an yeah. accusation. You know, screening is not an accusation. Screening is screening, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, to say, well, oh, I don't know. I don't need that. Like, do you? Are you sure? Like, let's just make sure. Right. I mean, then there's no harm, no foul, right? I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing with 
with mental health. Like people are like, oh, you think I'm crazy? I'm like, no, I mean, you can, you should always screen to make sure that you, your mental health is okay. You know, and it, this is not a bad thing if you're struggling, you know? And, and so I think we, that that's taboo a lot of times too. You know, I'm not crazy. I don't need you to do anything with it. That nobody's saying you're crazy or anything like that. I mean, these are just things as part of taking care of your whole self, you know? You get, that's what makes you right. That makes you whole. That's what makes you better able to take care of others if you take care of yourself. So we're not trying to get all in your business. We're not trying to judge you or or talk about you, you know, or the way that you live or whatever. It's just making sure that you're safe and making sure you're doing what you need to do and that you're aware, you know, making sure that you are aware. Hashtag for JJ. Hashtag bajayj. Hashtag don't quit your bajay job. Hashtag don't quit your bajay job. This is going to be a movement. I mean, I'm getting excited about the movement. Like, I'm just getting, like, all in my feelings. Hashtag 2019. (laughs) Hashtag 2019. It's going to be a thing and it's going to be out there. I think we need to go on and take a break at that because, you know, um, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we are going to delve in a little bit about spirituality. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Myra Fox and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Hey guys, this is Interconnected and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio and iHeart Radio. This evening, we're talking about AIDS awareness, and I have the pleasure of having special guest, OBGYN, Dr. Wendy Goodall, Goodall McDonald. And in this segment, we're going to talk about spirituality. So first off, what would you say spirituality means to you? It means a deeper connection. Um, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But I also respect and believe that people can have their their own connection, whether it's to the universe, whether it's to Allah, to, you know, their spiritual being, which may or may not be the same as mine. I feel like I don't know um, everything there is to know about this, the realm outside of the physical. And I'm learning. I'm learning every day how to kind of connect to my my own being, my own human being my own self and what that even means and who that is in relation to God. 
um, mm-hmm. or within God. And I think that there's so much more to know. And I think anybody who professes to know it all is lying to themselves, you know. Absolutely. And explain, I think how, how little they do know to think, oh, well, this got to be this and that's got to be that. And we really think that we can even fathom the greater that's beyond us. I, I, I can't. I can't. So I'm learning every day even how I fit into this space. Um, but mm-hmm. that's, to me, that's, that's spirituality. It's like this unknown, but this deeper connection to something greater. Okay. And we actually have a question from a listener. And that question is, what age do you suggest it is best to talk to youth about Hi. sex and Hi. HIV and AIDS? Hello, Hi. Cadence. I know, I'm sorry. She, she follows me. Um, what age is best to talk about sex and HIV and AIDS? Honestly... And we've already started talking about this with my oldest, who is in fourth grade. Um, okay. There are, there, the, the way that this world is and the TV and the YouTube and the, and the movies, and you can't barely watch anything without having some sort of, you know, some, even a sexual innuendo. And mm-hmm. that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't think that, that we all, you know, need to shelter. Like you said, you don't talk about these things when you're a kid. We don't mm-hmm. need to shelter our children away from sex because they, their curiosity does come about eventually, and it often leads to misinformation. So I think that starting the conversation about what our body parts are, we just talked mm-hmm. about actually how babies come out not too long ago, and their my kids are nine and seven. Um, mm-hmm. And we did say that we don't want to have all these conversations with their friends at school just yet. But right, I'm like, right, I'm right. not going to make up some stuff. We're not going to be over here talking about storks. And, it's not going to be and, no storks. Right. You know, you know, and it, right. It ain't going to be no, like, little wee-wees and noo-noos and all these names. Right. Like, you have a penis. Like, right. Have a vagina, and you have a vagina. You know? Right. Exactly. And just to understand your those book. things. And it, and I've always said to them, even when they were younger and we weren't really having super open conversations, I'm like, if you ever have any questions, you will never get in trouble by asking me a question. You will never be reprimanded or have any fear of, of, of any kind of back, you know, problems with me if you ask me something. If you go do something crazy, we might have something to say, you know. But, but if we mm-hmm. talk about it and we ask questions and we understand things, like that, that will never be punished, you know. So I think that that's in, at any point that a child expresses any curiosity, or there's something that you know you think is seen that doesn't really have a backstory that the kid might need. Just, just even ask your kid, hey, have, have you, do you have any questions for me? What are you guys talking about at school? Like probe into that too, mm-hmm. because you know kids, kids who aren't they afraid talking about it. will tell it's you. Like, yep. Yeah. They are talking about it. It's not. They're talking about. Oh yeah, in elementary school. Okay, they are talking about it in elementary yes. school. So don't. There's yes. yeah, you know, and, and there's there's definitely age appropriate ways. Yes. You know, to talk about things. But again, we're not doing the wee wees and the pee pees and the new news and the pocketbooks and the, you know whatever. Right. But, you know, right. They are. You know, but there are ways to talk about it and yes i don't under even i don't even know where that stork thing situation came from it doesn't make any sense you know i i don't i just don't know but i think it is important to just have that in communication now you can do too much though because you know i there i have had kids you know talk about the stuff and i'm like how what how do you know all that because they expose them and and parents like Kids do know what's going on. Don't think that you, oh, they're too young. They don't know what's going on. And, you know, and you doing all kinds of stuff. And you don't think that they know. Oh, they know. They know. They know. And you come and they start talking about all kinds of stuff. And you're like, where did you get that from, Um, you? You know, so just, uh, yeah, that was you. Yeah, they saw your behind yeah. up in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's too much. But I'm just saying, like, it's. It's true, though. It's true. So don't think that, oh, they don't know. They're not talking about this, you know, and, I, and I'll have even have parents like if we want to talk about, um, say, a, a child is, you know, moody around the time of their, their menstrual cycle or they have, you know, a very painful menstrual cycle, difficult menstrual cycle and or abnormal one. And then, you know, I say, well, you know, what about birth control? And they look at me like, oh. 
don't say BC. Like, you know, I'm like, what? You know, BC is not right. just before Christ. It's not just before Christ. Exactly. It is birth control. Like, why are we, she's 12. Like, I don't understand why we are being like, and you know, when she takes that one pill, you know, for the hormones. No, she's taking birth control. Birth control is used so much for things other than birth control these days. You'd be surprised. Absolutely. All the time. I don't think that all the time. Time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Rainy Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we're going to continue to talk about AIDS awareness. Stay tuned. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic. And healing. For everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. This evening, we're talking about AIDS awareness, and I have the pleasure of having special guests, OBGYN, and the shy town, Dr. Wendy Goodall McDonald. This is our meditation mindfulness segment, and the meditation message that I have for this evening is through judging we separate through understanding we grow and I think this is very important as we are living in a society where there's a lot of division and I think that people who may have been afflicted with any kind of illness whether it be mental or physical they're judged often you know and that's that stops them from even wanting to get help because they feel like they're going to be judged and being judgmental separates people, you know, it separates people. But if we just take the time to understand one another, because again, we are more similar than we are different. So if we take the time to understand one another, then that shows growth and, and, and we can unite. So I think that's very, 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 important what do you think Wendy I do you uh, yes. can you hear me I, I yes. agree I think that um, you know I was I was at a conference about a week ago about a week and a half ago and the gentleman was talking about no matter who you disagree with or whoever you don't think you know their their uh, way of life or their beliefs, you know, are, are true. He said, have coffee with them. And, you know, mm-hmm. everything was true. 
he was like, you know, you could be a, a staunch Republican. Have a, have have coffee with that Democrat that you think is crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. And and you are all of a sudden like, you know, everything will change. You don't believe in, you know, people with different sexual orientations or gender preferences, and you have coffee with them. And so the point I thought the point of that was to understand that, you know, when you see a person as human. When you take away their, you know, the things that you think make them, whatever their decisions that they have, you know, what you think that that defines a person. But we're all, like you said at the beginning, more similar than we are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, then you then you can't judge a person as much once you once you put the humanity into them. And if you sit down and talk to them. Or you listen to what they have to say, you know, or you have, let them explain that that sound bite that you just judged their whole life based on, you know, mm-hmm. then you can feel better about them. And, you know, many times because we have these preconceived notions, if you don't take the time to really get to know somebody just because of their preference, you know, you miss that you actually could have a lot of things, you know, similarities and a lot of things that you may agree on that you would even think just because someone practices a certain lifestyle that doesn't define that person. And, you know, it's interesting. I was talking uh, to someone the other day about um, the difference between like, you know, when you're thinking about dating and all of that and, as you, you know, there's a difference between what your standards are and what pre- what your preferences are. And I think as, you know, when you're younger, you have all of these things that you say are your standards, right? You know, all, you know, a person has to be a certain height or have a certain car, a certain job, and, these, and this and that. And then as you get older, you realize that those things are not as important. And there are other things that, you know, treat me right, you know spiritual or, you know, loves kids, a good sense of humor, you know, those types of things are more important. And those are, those are the standards and the preferences, you know, it would be nice if their job is this, or it would be nice if they're this height or, you know, or it would be nice, but that's not something that's a deal breaker. That's not, you know, make or break. And many times we look at the outside and the external things and we judge somebody and don't realize that, that could be a great person. That could be someone that's a lifelong friend. That could be a lifelong friend if you just take the time to have a conversation with them. And, you know, another thing is agreeing, agreeance and acceptance are two different things as well. You don't have to agree with someone's lifestyle to accept them as your brother or sister, you know, as your as your human brother or sister you can accept them as a human being that happens to have different views and happens to practice you know their life differently because it's not up to me to judge it's not I don't make the final call so it's not up to me to judge but I can love you for who you are you know so I also think we in this part of society are so quick to make people into that post or that 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 uh snippet on TV or that statement Mm -hmm. like the news and all that will say this person now believes this or this person read what this person had to say about and literally that that becomes their whole life it a moment can make or break and as much as I don't love like Roseanne Roseanne's whole career ended with like one which was a messed up thing but I'm just saying like we can't, I don't think it's, it's fair to treat people in general like that. It's one thing to treat, you know, to, for the media to do what it does and, you know, that, that kind of, you know, environment has to, has to flourish on its own. But I think on a day-to-day basis, we have to realize one thing is sensationalized, one thing is, is for entertainment, and the other thing is real life, you know, mm-hmm. and then a person is more than, you know, how I even acted last night, you know, or what I said, you know, last week. I am more than that. And I'm entitled to grow. I'm entitled to change. And then a person who maybe does something that's messed up can learn from that and not be, you know, committed for their entire life to being a jerk or to being, you know. Right. And you can even educate a person out of their out of their ignorance. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's all it's all about choices. And I mean, your stuff stinks just like somebody else's stuff stinks. Like, you know, we 
there's, like I said, we're more similar. You know, I was trying to not cuss. I said, no, my mom is listening. Hi, mom. Um, but I'm just saying, like, you, you're no better than anybody else. Everybody serves a role, you know, in society. So to have that, you know, holier than thou or I'm higher than you or better than you just because of how much I make or what I do or what I look like or what color I am or what sex I am or what gender I am or what I believe out with it. Okay. Just out with it. Hashtag time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. And when we come back, we are going to wrap up. Stay tuned. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. This evening, we've been talking about AIDS awareness, among a whole bunch of other things. And... In this segment, I just want to give Dr. my special guest, uh, OBGYN from the Chi Town, Dr. Wendy Goodall McDonald, the floor to talk about any key points she has and let people know how to follow you. Uh, thank you, my dear friend, Dr. Raina Gilmore. Um, I just th- appreciate you having me on. I'm glad that you know you're open to having this conversation. Um, and especially, you know, for those who know somebody with HIV or anybody who doesn't, just, just you know, be open to the conversation, be open to being tested, um, being screened. You know, am I at risk? Yeah, if you're having sex, you know what I'm saying? Especially, and some people, by the way, are screened even if they are in a monogamous relationship. I have married mm-hmm. couples who screen every year just because. Why not, you know? Um, you can follow me on Dr. Every Woman. Dot com, dreverywoman.com. I am on everything social at dreverywoman, fa- Facebook, Instagram. I'm technically on Snapchat, but I, I've been told only my son snaps on Snapchat, which just means that I don't control my phone like I should. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, cause you know he posted. I'm like, he did? I think he was just playing with the filters. No, he posted. Oh, no, my bad. Yeah, I, don't yeah, think, I don't think yeah. he knows he posted. That's my fault. Right, these kids. You know, they know more about my, my apps than I do, apparently. Twitter, mm-hmm. yeah, tweet me. Tweet me out here. Yeah, tweet, tweet, IG, all that stuff, OPP, you know me. Right. Um, and tell them about the video that you did recently, uh, the uh, HIV AIDS video you did recently. Yeah, I have so prep. 
PrEP is that medication that helps to prevent HIV over 99%. So I did a three-part video. It's going to be like a three-part a three part, uh, video with three different songs about different components of, of awareness for PrEP, um, two parodies of uh, Computer Love, uh, Shoop, you know, that Salt and Pepper song from back in the day, Shoop, and mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj's Anaconda. We remade okay, the tracks, now. and I rewrote, yeah, I know, right? Remade the tracks, rewrote the lyrics, and actually shot videos where I was, like, one of the main stars, and I just can't wait for it to be released, and it will definitely be on all of my social stuff um, when they come out in February. It's supposed to come out in, in uh, February 2019. Um, but it's, yeah, it's going to be good. I, I, I hope I'm prayer, prayerful that it will be something that increases awareness and is super fly. And also be looking out for the hashtag job Don't quit it. <laughs> Movement. Again, that's hashtag job Don't quit it. Okay. It's happening. Don't quit it. It's going to be out there. There'll probably be some kind of a video that goes along with it. We are the docs that are trying to spread health and awareness, both mental and physical and spiritual. All of it. We're trying to, we're trying to spread that through any means necessary, any means necessary. So be looking out for us. If you know anybody that can put us on, we are doctors and have a lot of loans. And so we're in debt. That's okay? right. So we actually need money. So it's nice to do this for fun and stuff, but it's also nice to get paid for it. So I'm just saying, if anybody has any connections, holla at either one of us. Okay. Because we, you know, we'll make house calls if we have to, if you pay for it. So, Anyways, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on uh, tonight. You know, I, I always enjoy having you on. So um, I'm sure we'll be doing more of this. And again, look out, you know, look yeah. out for stuff that we're doing. Uh, good night, Kaden. Thank you for entering this journey of the mind, body, and spirit with me. I hope everyone has a great week. And please always stay connected. Take care. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.